The Orton effect was created or invented by photographer Michael Orton back in the 70s or 80s, I'm not sure which. It was a technique where using transparency film, he would create these kind of dreamy images in his effort to simulate watercolor paintings. To create the Orton effect, Michael Orton would set his camera up on a tripod and compose his image. Using transparency film, he would overexpose a shot. I'm not sure how much. I suppose it depended on the scene and subject matter. He would take a second identical shot, but this time he would move the lens out of focus so the image was quite blurry. He would then stack those two transparencies on top of each other so the final effect would be an image of somewhat normal density with all of the, a lot of the detail of the sharp slide showing through, but adding this mystical glow from the blurry slide. And it was a real effective technique and he became quite famous for it. During the evolution of digital photography, we have tried to replicate many of the techniques that we used when shooting film or in a darkroom, and the Orton effect is no exception. And the final method is something that I don't think anybody's ever shown, and I, so I've kind of nicknamed it the Wayne Fox method of the Orton effect. And to me, it replicates the original technique the closest because I'm actually starting with raw files and I'm manipulating the images similar to what would be going on in the camera. It has the added benefit of being very non-destructive and completely editable, so you can tweak all of your various settings until you get a result that you'd like before you commit them. Let me mention that because this is very subtle and when you shrink a video like this down, most of the effect will disappear. So I've recorded this video in 1080 high def. You might want to uh, set your stream up to that high and go full screen or at least get a large enough window so you can really see what's going on. Method three of the Orton effect is something that I've never seen taught. I've nicknamed it the Wayne Fox method of the Orton effect. Uh, I don't know if anybody else has ever taught it, but I believe it has some advantages over the other two. Normally, to do this effect, you'll start with your RAW file and all of the modifications that you've made in Lightroom. It also works with TIFF and JPEG files as well. Uh, I just, because I'm trying to duplicate a film technique, I think starting with a RAW file is kind of cool. So we're going to take this image over because because the one we was just working with was not a RAW file. It was actually a panorama merge. So we're going to go here and we're going to edit in Photoshop, but we're going to open it as a smart object in Photoshop. The advantage of opening it as a smart object is it's still a RAW file. And that means we can double click the smart object and it will open an Adobe Camera Raw. And all of the settings that we've done in Lightroom can be reapplied to the raw image data itself. And that's a feature that we're going to take advantage of. So the first thing we need to do is make a copy of the raw file, but we have to make it a little different way because if we just hit Command or Control J, those two copies will be linked. So we need to make, a different, make it a different way. And the easiest way to do that is just to right click and then go New Smart Object via Copy. This means that these two copies are not independent of each other. We're going to call this one our base. Now we need a copy of this layer, and this time we can do Command-J because one of the things we want to do is both of these files will synchronize with all the changes that we make, and this layer, of course, ends up becoming our blur. We're going to put these two in a grouping again, and we'll call this Wayne Fox Orton. And we're going to double click one of these two layers and we're going to overexpose our image. Now the amount you need to overexpose varies. We're going to overexpose this particular image one stop. The cool part is is that you can keep changing your exposure until you get it to where you like it because all of the things we're doing now are non-destructive. Now notice as we uh, do that that both of these two copies lightened so we now have an image that is a stop lighter, but it's not a screen mode image, it's our raw file. And that exposure adjustment was made similar to opening the lens up and shooting it overexposed. So we need to turn this top layer to multiply. And now we're ready to blur this layer. Filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And again, this window is showing us the effect on the layer that we're on. 
and you'll notice it doesn't take a lot of blur to get this image pretty blurry. And we'll zoom in here again to 50%, and this image previews the effect in the overall image. Now the results of this one are similar to the first method, uh, but I think it's a little bit more accurate, and I think it duplicates the original Orton effect uh, the closest. So in this case, I only need a blur of about seven or eight. I don't need to go very high. I could go quite high and exaggerate it, but you'll see how that's bleeding in too much. And that's what I watch for. I watch for the color bleeding into parts that I want to kind of leave, leave pure. So I'm going to go about there. 9.5 is fine. And now we have our Orton effect done. This is before and after. And let's go ahead and uh, zoom back out a little bit. And let's go before and after. So now that we've done that, you can see that there's a couple of cool things we can do. First of all, we can decide that our density's off a little bit. And we literally can just double click one of these two smart objects and add or subtract a little bit more density. The other thing that I usually do with this method, which I think is pretty cool, is when I go into here, I'll normally pull the whites down and the blacks up a little bit and that will reduce some of the dark spots and make the contrast a little bit more pleasant. I can even get very extreme in that if I want. It's hard to preview it in this image, but I can pull my shadows up quite a bit and my blacks up a little more and hit OK. And you'll see how the shadows lightened up. There's before and there's after. So because I can tweak the raw file, it's as though I shot it differently, which is really, really cool. It's as though you could change your transparency settings on the fly uh, when you were shooting it with film. The other thing I can do is I can change the amount of blur. I can reduce the blur or increase it. So this, this method is very, very non-destructive and allows me to tweak it and I can either tweak it till I like it and then flatten the image or I can save it in this state so I can always make a change later. So that's one reason I like this particular way to do the Orton effect because of all the changes. Now if you're using one of the other methods you can also convert your layers to smart objects before you apply changes such as the Gaussian blur and that will allow you to also redo the blur later if you want. So that's the Wayne Fox method of the Orton effect. So with most images you're going to want to remove part of the Orton effect from some of the image. One of the nice things we have about doing digital and I would guess a lot of the time it's just a matter of painting it out or using some simple masking techniques in Photoshop. Here I'll just add a mask. I don't like what it's doing in this building. So let me just go ahead and uh, grab my brush and let's just paint it out very quickly. All right, I'll warn you that the brush, the circle doesn't show the actual edge of your feather. You can see that I've got a feather. It's the middle of the transition. So you kind of have to take that in mind. Of course, in this case, if I get a little bit into the trees, it won't hurt anything. So just to give you a quick idea, let's zoom in here and you can see that with the Orton effect off, we have a much sharper, more detailed shot of the building. And yet down in the, the Christmas lights in the water, we're able to maintain that Orton effect. This isn't affecting it much. And I would need to be more careful. And you can see that I need to, uh, some of the building I would have to paint more, but I just wanted to show a quick demo. So that's the most common way you're gonna do it. I wanted to show two techniques I use, which are maybe something that you haven't uh, seen before because I found them to be very effective in removing, especially for the Orton effect. And this image lets me demonstrate both of those. First of all, in this image, I would prefer the shadows to not lose as much detail. To me, the Orton effect is about the light, light part of the images seeming to glow as though they're glowing with light and the shadows I would prefer to have a little less of that effect going on. And I also would prefer to see the detail of the trunks of these trees 
show through either all the way or at least a lot more. So there are two techniques I can do to accomplish that and they're actually easier than you would think. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to apply a luminosity mask to our Orton effect and that will allow us to remove it from any, basically any brightness level of the image. In this case we want to get the darkest darks. So I'm going to go to my channels palette. I'm going to control or command click on the RGB channel and you'll see that I have a selection now. The selection is based on the brightness values of the pixels and it's probably the upper 20%. If I hold shift and then command or control, each time it will add a level further. So that's you know 40%, 60%, 80%. And now I've mainly got the uh, dark pixels um, are excluded. If I go back to my layers palette now and I go to my Orton method and I just hit my mask icon, you'll see that I have this really cool mask that's not pure black but it's based on the darkness of the pixels and it effectively took the uh, effect out of the darkest part of the image. Now in this case I think it didn't go quite far enough so I'm going to delete it and I recommend when you're doing this you actually count your number of clicks so if you want to do it again you can just go one more click. So we're going to click once, twice, three times, four times, five times, I think last time I only clicked four, and maybe I'll go one more click. So I'm really uh, going to only affect the darkest parts of the image here. Go to my Orton method, layer, and now you can see that it's really affected just the shadows. Now maybe it's affected them too much and that's fine because all you got to do is go to your properties of your mask and pull that density down a little bit and you can pull it back and you can really uh, have a lot of fine control. So that's how I take care of the shadows. The tree trunks are a little different and you know you might have an image where you've got some very light areas that you want to uh, pull the detail back in. Let's just let me just uh, turn it off and on. And to do that I would use the select by color range option. I need to make sure that I have a normal layer selected and I will click somewhere in these trees. I'm going to turn the quick mask off. Click somewhere in the whites of the trunks. I'm going to turn my plus dropper on. I'd, easier than holding shift and I'm going to start clicking and sampling a lot of these areas. In this particular image it's nice because there really are no colors similar to these trunks anywhere else in the image. And so it's actually pretty easy to isolate these tree trunks. I usually will grab the quick mask and look because that really helps you understand what you've got selected. And this looks pretty good. That's where I want the detail to come back through. So I'm just going to hit OK and go to my mask. I want to make sure that I have some feather in this. So you need to select your uh, rectangle marquee and then make sure your feathers you know somewhere between 5 and 15 depending on how high a resolution the file is because we don't want this hard edge. Once we do that we'll make sure our mask is selected and we just fill it with black or if you want to use less uh, you can apply an 80 percent gray or 70 percent gray if you want it to be not 100 percent you can just put in a different level of gray. So this is before, this is uh, after, let's go back before, after. Let me zoom in here. Before, after. So now my trees pretty much look like the original shot. And yet I've got this really nice Orton effect going on, only affecting the kind of parts of the image I would like to glow. So those are two techniques that are very, very useful to help you blend out part of the luminosity mask. Obviously you can use any of the masking capabilities of Photoshop to do this. The key point is most of the time it's nice to pull some of that back out. Thanks for listening to the video. I hope that uh, you'll find the Wayne Fox method of the Orton effect effective. I think it is by far the most useful and powerful because it is so controllable and editable. And until next time, thanks.